Proverbs chapter 16 and then verse 16, or verse 18 rather. We're going to look at that in just a moment. We're going to be speaking today on the problem with pride. How many of you have a problem with pride? Would you lift your hand? All right. Uh, I'm going to be preaching to you today, but I'm especially going to be preaching to those who didn't lift their hands. <laughs> In all seriousness, pride is a problem that all wrestle with, and those who think they don't have it probably have more of it. Proverbs 16, verse 18, pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. There is a sin, a very dangerous sin, that in my estimation is doing more to hold back revival than any other sin, doing more to destroy homes than any other sin, doing more to ruin this nation than any other sin, causing more Christians to live in failure and defeat than any other sin, and that is filling hell more than any other sin, and very frankly, it is the sin of pride. Now, we're going to uh, speak about that in a moment, but just put it down, it is a dangerous sin, and the worst thing about it, it, it is such a deceitful sin. Many people who are infected and infested with pride have no idea that they are. There is at least a benefit and a bliss to being a drunkard. The drunkard knows he's a drunkard. The thief knows he's a thief. But many times the proud person does not recognize that he or she is proud. As a matter of fact, the proud person is often very proud of his humility. It's kind of catchy, isn't it? Uh, the Sunday school teacher was teaching that lesson in the Bible about the publican and the Pharisee. The publican would not even lift his head to heaven, but he bowed his head and said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. But the Pharisee, the Bible says, stood and prayed, and he said, Lord, I thank you that I'm not as other men are. Why, I fast and I, I tithe and I do all of these things. And Jesus said that one man went home justified rather than the other. The Sunday school teacher was teaching this lesson and she had done a wonderful job, but when she finished, she beamed and looked out at her scholars in her class and said, And children, aren't we grateful we're not like that old Pharisee? Now, you see, she was proud of her humility. It's a very, it's a very dangerous thing. The Bible has a lot to say about pride. Now, we need to learn what pride is not. Pride is not having a good self-image. Uh, don't get the idea that if you have a good self-image that you're proud. Not so. I want to tell you something. In Jesus, you're somebody. Amen. You are somebody. Jesus is not ashamed to call you his brothers and his sisters. That means we're next of kin to the Holy Trinity. Now you say, that's uh, megalomania. No, it's Bible truth. I hear people talking about the fact that uh, they're just sinners saved by grace. Well, that technically is true, but that's not the Bible description of you. The Bible description of you is the righteousness of God in Christ. That's what the Bible uh, calls you. And uh, you are somebody. Jesus, read John chapter 13. The Bible says, Jesus, knowing that he came from God and went to God, laid aside his garments, took a towel, girded himself, and washed his disciples' feet. That is humility. Not thinking lowly of himself, he knew that he came from God. He knew that he was going to God. But knowing all of that, he washed his disciples' feet. Pride is not a good self-image. Humility is not thinking lowly of yourself. It is not thinking of yourself. Pride is not uh, gratefulness for a, a job well done. We say about an individual, he takes pride in his work. We're not talking about the kind of pride that I'm talking about right now. You ought, if you sweep the floor, sweep out the corners also. Do a good job. That's not the kind of pride we're talking about. When a job is well done and you give recognition or when you're grateful for the grades that a grandchild or a child makes and so forth, that's not what we are talking about when we're talking about pride. It is, what is pride? 
Let me give you three things that are summed up before we get into the message. And by the way, I'm going to give you this morning five ways that pride will ruin and devastate your life. Pride is the most destructive thing in the universe. So don't, don't check me out now. This pertains to you. What is pride? Number one, pride is an attitude of independence from God. I don't need you, God. Stay out of my life. I can handle it myself. A spirit of independence from God. L the man who wrote the poem, Invictus, said, I am the master of my faith. I am the captain of my soul. I feel like saying, Captain, your ship is about to sink. Now, an attitude of independence from God. You say, well, I don't have that. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you pray regularly? And you say, well, I, I don't pray as much as I ought to. Do you know why you don't pray? Your prayerlessness is not your great problem. Your great problem is you don't feel the need to. Hmm? Come on, listen. You don't feel the need to. You say, well, I, I can handle it. <laughs> Everything's going fine. The, our prayerlessness is really a spirit of independence from God. And, and if you're wrestling with prayerlessness, may I tell you that what you're really wrestling with is pride. Pride is a spirit of independence from God, an attitude. It, and it, and Following along with that is a spirit of ungratefulness to God. When God has so blessed us, we have so many things. We act like we deserve it, and we have earned it, and it is ours. Paul asked this penetrating question, what do you have that you've not received? You say, well, I worked for it. Who gave you the ingenuity to work? Who gave you the strength? Who gave you the energy? Who gave you all of that? Did you create that? No. You don't have one blessed thing that you've not received. Say amen. You know that is true. What is pride? Pride is also esteeming yourself better than other people. Do you think because you've achieved certain things or have certain things that you are better than somebody else? No. Now, pride esteems one's self better than others. Well, let's see if we can just tighten the focus a little bit before I tell you these five terrible things that pride will do to you. Let, let's just take, take a test and see, somebody's given this list of, of indicators of a proud person. Uh, a proud person becomes irritated when corrected for mistakes. Hello? <laughs> Number two, a proud person accepts praise for things over which he or she has no control. Beauty, talent, abilities, those are gifts. When you begin to accept praise for things over which you have no control, that's, that's pride. Uh, a pride uh, will not admit mistakes. Always an excuse, always an alibi, an attempt to justify oneself. And pride says when it, there's a disagreement, all right, I can get along without you. You ever feel that way towards somebody else? What that is is really pride. Pride refuses to take counsel and to learn from other people. Pride has an ungrateful spirit for all that God has done. Pride often shows itself in competition with other people. Pride does not want more. Pride wants more than somebody else. C.S. Lewis has said this, and I want to share it with you. I copied it down. He said, pride gets no pleasure out of having something only out of having more of it than the other man. We say that people are proud of being rich or clever or good-looking, but they are not. They are proud of being richer or more clever or better-looking than others. It is the comparison that makes you proud, the pleasure of being above the rest. Now, We've talked about what pride uh, is. Uh, we, <laughs> we, we've talked about how it manifests itself. May I give you now five things that pride will do to ruin and devastate your life? Number one, pride defies God. Pride is a fist in the face of God. Now, we're going to be in the book of Proverbs, and so if you want to just stay in the Proverbs, we're going to go back and forth through the Proverbs because the book of Proverbs gives us some wonderful lessons on the problem of pride. Uh, look, if you will, in Proverbs chapter 6 and verses 16 through 19. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet 
that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Those are seven things that God hates. Number one on God's hate parade is pride. pride. Number one on God's hate parade is pride. A proud look. Why does God hate pride? Proverbs 16 verse 5, everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. That's strong language. If you're proud, you are abominable to God. Why does God hate pride so much? Friend, listen to me. It was pride that created the devil. It was pride that turned uh, Lucifer, the son of the morning, into Satan, the father of the night. The national religion or the national religion of Satan's kingdom is pride. That's what Satan's kingdom is built on. No wonder pride defies God. When, when uh, uh, Paul was giving young Timothy the standard for a preacher, one of the things he said for a minister is this in 1 Timothy 3 verse 6, not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride he fall under the condemnation of the devil. One of the prime requisites for a preacher, young or old, is humility. A wise man said nothing will keep a minister more out of the devil's reach than genuine humility. And, and uh, uh, he, the Bible says he cannot be a novice, that is, just new, untrained, unseasoned, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall under the condemnation of the devil, the same thing that made the devil the devil. Why does God hate pride? It made the devil the devil. Why does God hate pride? Pride ruined the human race. In the Garden of Eden, when Satan came to tempt Eve, do you think that the temptation was to taste a particular kind of fruit? Good night. The garden was full of fruit. That wasn't the temptation. The temptation was, take this and you will be as God. It was the same thing that caused Satan to fall. The same thing that ruined the human race and, and brought sin into the world. No wonder uh, pride defies God. Friend, look at all heartache, all tears, all sorrow, all war, all strife, all pain, all agony, all shame, and you can say, pride did it. Pride did it. Pride has wrecked the human race. I'm saying that God is against this matter of pride. Again, let me quote C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis said, as long as you're proud, you cannot know God. A proud man is always looking down on things and people. A proud man is always looking down on things and people. And as long as you are looking down, you cannot see something above you. The man who's looking down on others is not looking up at God. At the same time, pride defies God. Now, put, I, we, I said we're going to stay in, in Proverbs, but here's an ancillary scripture we cannot pass. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 5, the Bible says, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Now, grace is both the desire and the ability to do the will of God. And we all need grace. But grace and pride are antithetical. And God resists the proud. It is not that God merely doesn't help the proud. God lines himself up in battle array against the proud. God resists the proud. Is that what you want God to do to you? 1 Peter 5, 5. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. That's the first thing pride will do uh, to destroy your life. Uh, pride uh, defies God. Number two. Pride defiles man. Uh, pride is a, it comes out of the heart and it defiles the very heart of man. Uh, and, and the seat of pride is the heart. Proverbs 16 verse 5 speaks of everyone that is proud in heart. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. And then Proverbs 21 and verse 4. A high look, a proud heart, and the plowing of the wicked is sin. That is, a man who would plow his field without giving God thanks for the sun and the germinating qualities and for the rain. He's proud. He's self-sufficient. 
And so the Bible says that uh, if you have pride, even when you plow a field, that it is sin. It just defiles man. Where does this pride come from? Friend, we were born with it. Pride comes out of the heart. Mark chapter 7, verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride. That comes out of the heart. Little children were born with pride in their heart. Uh, you don't believe it? Take a little child, surround him with toys. More than he needs, he's not playing with them. Let another mother bring her little baby and put him on the floor. And that little baby go over and pick up one of those toys. Your sweet little baby will leave the toys he's playing with, go over there and bop that other kid and take that toy. <laughs> Children are born with pride and ego and selfishness in their hearts. I hate to tell you folks, but it, it is true. It comes out of the heart. You, you think these things are learned. They're not learned. They're part of human nature. Jesus said they come out of the heart. I've often used this illustration. If you see an apple with a wormhole in it, uh, you know, the old, old saw, what's worse than finding a, a worm in your apple? is finding half a worm. <laughs> you see that wormhole. How did that worm get into that apple? I read this. It's very interesting. The worm did not bore into the apple. The worm bored out of the apple. The worm was, the egg was laid in the blossom. The worm was hatched inside the apple and made its way out. And the pride that has come out of us, folks, it, it was in the blossom. It was on the inside and it just makes its way out. Out of the heart, Jesus said, these things come. And so pride defies God. Pride defiles man. And, and uh, that's the reason. Every person in this building, if he's not been saved, needs to be saved and born again. Because when we were born the first time, we were born with a nature that is inclined to pride. I hope you understand that. Number three, we're talking about five things that pride will do to you. Number three, pride divides society. It defies God, it defiles man, and it divides society. I'm going to tell you something, and you may disagree with me for a moment. But there has never been an argument, there's never been a war, there's never been a divorce, there's never been a church split that pride was not the major factor. Let me say that again. There's never been an argument, never been a war, never been a divorce, never been a church split where pride was not the major factor. Pastor, can you prove that? Yep. Proverbs 13, verse 10, only by pride cometh contention. Only by pride cometh contention. Proverbs 28, verse 25, He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife. That's obvious. If, a, if, if God resists the proud, then the proud man is out of fellowship with God. And any man, woman, boy, or girl is out of fellowship with God is going to be out of fellowship with other people. It follows his night, follows day. And, and so pride uh, divides society. Uh, have you, you, ever, <laughs> you ever get into a discussion with your wife? You know the way I'm using the word discussion, one can be heard by the neighbors. <laughs> a discussion. What's that all about? It's about pride. Your arguments, they're about pride. The arguments that you have with your mate are ego against ego. There are no problems too big to be solved, they're just people too small to solve them. If you put the problem out in the middle and attack the problem rather than one another, then you can solve the problem. But we're not trying to solve the problem. We're trying to win the argument. You know, it's true. And, and that is pride. Only by pride comes contention. When Joyce and I have a disagreement, I go back and lick my wounds a while and sulk a while and sulk a while and, and try to pray a while. And, and then finally, I say, okay. Let's analyze it. You know the problem? My pride. My pride. That's it. God says, Adrian, you are proud. 
No matter whether you're right or wrong. I might be right and I'm still the problem because of my attitude, which is pride. And boy, it hurts and feels so good at the same time to go and say, I was wrong and I am sorry and forgive me. And were it not for the grace of God, I couldn't do that because of the natural inclination of a human heart for pride. Only by pride come a contention. Any contention in your home ever? Huh? <laughs> I wonder if one of your children can come up here and give a testimony right now. <laughs> Any contention in your home, put it down big, put it down plain, put it down straight. Pride is the issue. Only by pride cometh contention. Again, I want to remind you that, uh, that the problem is ego against ego. And if you take ego off the throne and put Jesus Christ on the throne of your life, and your wife or your husband takes ego off the throne and throws Jesus Christ in, his, in her life, then the Jesus in her is not going to fight the Jesus in you. And the Jesus in both homes is going to be able uh, to take care of the problem. Pride is the chief cause of misery in society. What, what is the problem between races? I can put it down in one word, pride. Racial pride. No matter what color you are, that is the problem, and God is dead set against it. Now, uh, number four. Here's the fourth thing that pride does. Pride dishonors life. Let me tell you a, 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 a great irony. Do you know what the proud person is wanting? Praise, honor, esteem. That is the very thing he wants, and what does he get through pride? Dishonor. Pride dishonors life. Notice Proverbs 11 and verse 2. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. Does anybody here want to shame? No, what does the proud man want? He doesn't want shame. He, he wants honor, but he doesn't get it. Put down Proverbs 15 verse 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. Humility comes before honor, not pride. Put this down, Proverbs 18, verse 12, Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty, and before honor is humility. Put this one down, Proverbs 29, verse 23, A man's pride shall bring him low. Is it not ironical, I say? That the proud man wants to be praised, petted, vaunted, honored. And the very thing he wants is the very thing that he loses, the admiration of others. And what he ends up with, a proud person always ends up not with admiration, but contempt. <laughs> Somebody said a self-conceit uh, is a disease that makes everybody sick except the one who has it. But the truth of the matter is he's the sickest of all full of conceit. Now, Jesus taught us very clearly and very plainly that the way up is down and the way down is up. Remember I told you that God uh, hates pride. It's number one on his list. Why does God hate pride? Let me tell you how the devil became the devil. I'm going to read to you from Isaiah 14, verse 13. God is speaking to Lucifer. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I want you to listen to the perpendicular pronoun I now. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend up above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. And they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee. That is, they're going to have to squint in order to even see you. And consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble and to shake kingdoms? Here is Satan saying, I am going to be like the most high. I'm going up, 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 I, 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 I. And God says, you're going down, 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 down. Down, 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 down. One day we'll look and say, is that the devil? <laughs> I can hardly see him. <laughs> That's him. That's him.
What's our Lord saying? Our Lord is saying, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought himself not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and God hath given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Listen, when you follow Jesus Christ in genuine humility, rather than Satan in his arrogancy, you're going to be given in the days to come, don't let this go past, you are going to be given in the days to come a greater position than Satan had before he fell. Probably didn't get in because I, I didn't hear my say amen. <laughs> you follow Jesus Christ. I am telling you, listen to me. You follow Jesus Christ and God is going to give to you, his saints, a greater position than Satan had before he fell. Amen. The Bible says we will judge angels. Satan is a fallen angel. We will judge angels. Uh, the very thing that people want, they lose. Pride dishonors life. Let me tell the boys and girls a story, a make-believe story. Once there was a frog in the cold mud of Minnesota, and he saw some Canadian geese, and he said, where are you guys going? They said, we're going south for the winter. That frog said, I want to go with you. They said, you don't have any wings. He said, but I have an idea. He said, let's take a twig, and this goose will put a twig in his beak, and this goose will put a twig in his beak, and I will take my mouth and grab that twig and hold on, and you can fly me south. They said, do you think it'll work? He said, let's try it. And so one big Canadian goose over here, another big Canadian goose over here with a twig between them, and that frog got hold, and they're flying south. Over Indiana, over Indiana, a farmer looked up and saw two geese with a stick and a frog. And he said, would you look at that? That is the most amazing thing I have ever seen. I wonder whose idea that was. The frog said, mine. <laughs> Pride dishonors life. last of all. And here's the fifth thing that pride will do. Pride destroys souls. Pride, friend, populates hell. Pride ultimately destroys all that it controls. It is the road to ruin. Proverbs 15, verse 25, the Lord will destroy the house of the proud. Proverbs 16, verses 18 and 19, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. Proverbs 18, verse 12, before destruction, the heart of man is haughty, and before honor is humility. The seeds of destruction, eternal destruction, are in pride. Now, no one can be saved apart from the grace of God. But the Bible says God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. I'm telling you, Pride is the road to ruin, whether it's national ruin. America is so proud. What a proud nation we are. And God says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. National ruin, domestic ruin. There are congregations that have families that are breaking apart. Why? Pride, as I've already said. Financial ruin. Some of you right now are in financial bondage. Do you know why? I'll tell you. Your neighbors keep buying things you can't afford. And you think you have to have it in order to stay up. Emotional ruin. If you're a proud person, your emotions are going to, to be very thin because... Uh, you are going to be controlled by circumstances. If you don't have the right car, if you don't have the right clothes, if you don't have the right decorations, if you don't have the right this or that, uh, uh, and, and emotionally it's going to get to you. 
But friend, primarily it is spiritual ruin and eternal ruin. Do you know the reason that some people cannot have their ministry blessed? They're too big for God to use. You can be too big for God to use, but you can never be too small for God to use. But pride destroys souls. Pride is filling hell. Remember the story I told you earlier about Jesus? Talking about two went to the temple to pray. One a publican, another a Pharisee. The publicans were the IRS of that day. They were the tax collectors. And, but uh, they were very, very crooked, very dishonest. Uh, besides that, the Jews hated them because they worked for Rome and Israel had been occupied by the Roman government and Roman law. And so to say publican in that day was almost an epithet to uh, a, 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 a word of, uh, of condemnation and scorn. And so this publican went to pray and a Pharisee. The Pharisees were the religious of the religious. Oh, man, a Pharisee wouldn't even eat an egg that was laid on Saturday. I'm serious. Uh, if a mosquito was biting that Pharisee on, on Saturday, he wouldn't slap it because he would not go hunting on the Sabbath. Hey, this is true. If he got a tack in his shoe, he would always pull it out before Saturday lest he'd be accused of carrying a burden on the Sabbath. So religious were they. And this Pharisee is praying and, he's, and, the pup, and, and he's saying, Father, uh, God, I... The Bible says, and by the way, he prayed with himself. That is, God wasn't hearing his prayer. He said, God, I thank you I'm not like other men are. And I fast and I do this and I, I tithe and, I, and so forth. And then he says, and I especially thank you I'm not like this, this publican. The Bible says the publican smote himself upon the breast, would not even lift his eyes to heaven. And he prayed and he said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Actually, what he really said is, God, be merciful to me, the center, sinner. He saw himself as the chief of sinners. You know what Jesus said? And two men went to church to that day. One went home dignified. The other went home justified. Everybody in this building will go home one of those two ways. Dignified or justified. I've been preaching long enough to know that when you preach and give the gospel invitation, there are certain very nice people, very cultured people who will look around and see if any of those sinners are going to go forward to get saved. Not understanding what the Bible teaches that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. Let me tell you about the grace of God. Remember, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. The grace of God is sufficient for everyone in this building today. Now listen, listen to me carefully. There's no one in this building so bad that God will not save him. No one. I don't care what you've done, I'll tell you on the authority of the Word of God, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all sin. You can bank on it. If you want to be saved, God will save you instantaneously and keep you eternally. No one here so bad they cannot be saved. Now listen to the second thing. No one so good they need not be saved. I'm going to ask you to make a wonderful decision. I'm going to ask you to lay your intellectual pride in the dust to lay your moral pride in the dust. And I'm going to ask you openly and publicly to do what millions and millions have done and give your heart to Jesus Christ and come just as you are without one plea but that his blood was shed for you.